they sit right here and then as soon as those birds pitch in the field they're dead all right guys that's a bit of prep there hopefully we got a big big meal because i'm starting to get hungry Does that work with the bucket or no? No. I mean, if this is, I feel like I'm sitting at the, the adult table and I'm a kid, you know? We went to a property that we had permission for. And somebody else was already set up hunting it. And we got a late start, but it would probably wouldn't have mattered anyway. We would end up with a conflict in the driveway. So we had the spot set out that we had roosted a couple birds the night before. Sunday, no hunting. That was yesterday. So we couldn't get in there. This morning, it's pissing rain. That's what we're dealing with right now. I don't feel hungry, so yesterday I think I ate enough clams, fish eggs and sperm, so I'm, I'm set to go, fired up. <laughs> Maybe it's giving me some virility this morning, but I feel pretty good. Um, the weather's not the greatest for turkeys, but we've seen them driving around in the field, so there's always a chance we might drum one up. I'm just going to put a call out right now. Uh, what we're doing is just trolling. So basically, we walk around the woods a little bit, put out a call, ho hopefully we hit a gobbler. If I hear a gobbler, I can hunt it. Let's go for a walk. I got Chris here. Keep introducing him as Zach's apprentice, but he's my apprentice. Yep. And he's helping You're me out, recruited. taking me on a tour here. So we're on uh, Zach's property. I'm starting to get hungry now. <laughs> There's nothing like turkey hunting for your food, or hunting for your actual food that you're going to eat on the spot. If you think I'm talking loud, it's fine because <laughs> it's not going to bother the turkeys too much. They're more, they're more in tune with their eyesight than their hearing. They can't smell for sh snot. So you don't have to worry about your scent control or anything like that. So you think you're learning anything about turkey hunting? A little bit. A little bit? Yeah. It's hard to learn when they're, you haven't gone any turkeys yet and you haven't been around. Really much cooperation <laughs> with the turkeys. No? <laughs> we'll see what we can do though. You'll call here in a second, but I want to tell you guys that this is a wilderness living challenge. And I haven't eaten any modern foods and I'm on my fifth day. And we weighed ourselves in at the start. Not Chris and I, but Zach and I. He's back at camp. I think he slept in because of the rain, to be honest. Because he was supposed to go hunt another spot and we were supposed to come back together and hopefully share some turkey. Yeah, we're gonna weigh ourselves in. We weigh ourselves at the start, weigh ourselves at the end. And see if we lose any weight. The idea is not to lose any at all. Well, I'll give her a call here. A sad, lonely hen. Well, thankfully you have some eggs left over. Oh, I have to eat those. So that's fish or egg sperm from our alewife. Most people call them herring. So I took all those out. I boiled them in water. That's basically going to be my breakfast since I didn't get a turkey. That's pretty apropos. It's kind of like eating eggs and bacon. Sperm was anywhere near bacon. How does that look, guys? It's a little on the heavy raw side right now. But man, is that calorie rich. 
I already feel the energy coming back. It's not really flavorful. It's not really flavorless. It's an interesting flavor. It's kind of like a weird chicken egg. There's nothing wrong with it. I could eat a lot of this. i to find a way to eat this better, so I grab my toothpaste. <laughs> it makes a good spoon, at least for eggs. You can get like a whole mouthful. I feel a lot better than I did yesterday, I tell you that. See if we can't cook up a little bit of cattail while the uh, rain settled down a touch. This pot's all scorched out from our lobsters. I don't know if you guys are just joining me on this adventure or you've been following along, but yeah, we've been eating all kinds of creatures from Maine. I think the lobster is probably the thing that's most associated with Maine. Could be wrong. You let me know. I didn't realize there was this much woods in Maine. Morning, sleepyhead. <laughs> you didn't put your makeup on yet. No, I'm not. <laughs> Dude, you got so many bites on your arm. What? You see that? Oh, yeah. What's that from? The bug bites. Are they? Like yeah. black flies? Yeah, one or two black fly bites, right? One or two. You got like a dozen there. What? I can't see that side of my arm. <laughs> yeah, it's like, see? Those are, there's one, two, three, four, five right there. Oh. Black flies? Yeah. Not, not like yep. snake bites or anything. I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> we'll find out later today. It's raining out, you know? Yeah, I heard the rain. I said, I'm not going out turkey hunting in this. Yeah, it's hard to hunt in the rain, man. Yeah, figured I'd try to rest off this stupid cold and see if I could wake up more refreshed. I feel a lot better now. Yeah, good. I think I finally turned the corner yesterday, like last night. Yeah. yeah. That's what Termwork's about, man. If you split up and divide, then uh, Zach's able to offer the cattail shoots um, and other foraging stuff and also like pretty sweet shelter to hang out in when it's raining like now fire pit smoke the fish um, Chris and I can bugger off and look for turkey and try to add to some of the things that we already have They got everybody inspired to try out the work sharp Zach you want to carve me a spoon because this is what I was using That's what you're using as a toothpaste? Dude it works so good it like it's like scoops up the bottom man I was it was raining this morning it was raining real bad this morning. I didn't want to go oh, back out and get a stick. Oh my goodness. What? <laughs> the amount that he just put half of what was in that. He just... Yeah, this isn't about savoring. It's about getting it done. Yeah. All right, this is what it looks like around camp right now. So we figure out what the next step is. What's up with my knife next? All right, we're gonna give our bush celery a shot. This is cattail roots. You can eat these raw. Um, I wouldn't advise you eat them raw as a habit because when you pull them out of the swamp, you're eating the swamp water and you might get sick. I have eaten them raw before and the chances of getting sick are low, but uh, not zero. So if you can boil them, it will make it more tender. These actually kind of taste like celery in swamp water even though the water's fresh. Um, not the best cattails I've ever had. But, I got a little bit of sugar out of it and probably helped me with, um, you know, the BM business, keep things moving. 
because we haven't been eating a lot of fiber mostly proteins and fats so you don't eat this stuff too it's uh not a proper balance we get them at the right stage you get just the base of the cattail grab the leaves pull the leaves apart grab the stem from the middle and pull up and you only eat the last little portion there so you, when i showed you cutting them we're just cutting the ends off putting them in the water but if you get them right only in the spring don't get them later on they get woodier and woodier like all plants so don't eat an old plant only eat new plants all wild edibles are about the same you only eat new growth that's all your grocery food is all new growth new leaves for lettuce um, once it gets bigger, it shoots the, the flower up and then it all gets woody and it's not good to eat anymore. So we got a plan for today. Zach is just finishing up. He cooked uh, alewife on a hot rock on the fire. Um, I finished off most of the cattails. I have, uh, can I get this right? I got one mouthful left there, which I will eat. Um, kind of begrudgingly at this point, kind of stuffing. And then I eat all my fish eggs and fish sperm. There's like a little drip left, so I'm gonna get that one. Good, but cold. And a stuffing of fiber and starches from the cattails. Oh, it's not good. It kind of tastes like eating like a balled up bunch of roots. Well, cause it is. Whoa, no big finds for me. The gun is unloaded. Let's go. <laughs> Let's get her done. Get ourselves a turkey. So if we don't get a turkey today, we're gonna be hungry tomorrow. Well, we gotta get, we have options, a turkey or lobster. So that bird out there, we can hunt right now. Um, you wanna give a, we can give him a go. We gotta go back about 100 yards. He's not spooked yet, but. So we, we just backed up a little bit. We're camoing up. I make no guarantees on this hunt at all. I forgot my full face one at home, so I'm going like that. But I'm not quite ready yet. I get load up first. All right, so we're getting close. Zach's put his camera away. So. But initially, just in case yeah. they're really close to the yes. wall, I'll let you scooch in. And then if it seems okay, then I'll I'll come up to you. Yeah. Yeah. Alright, let's go. footsteps. You gotta do one or the other.
Well, that didn't work out. <laughs> By the time we got all the way around here, swung around, the bird wasn't even in the field. Not even in the field to spook us, to spook it. So I don't know if it hurt us walking through the woods or... I thought we did a pretty good job. So Zach was smart enough to bring a blind. We're gonna string it up from one tree to the other tree. And this is actually a perfect, almost ready to go blind already. And that was a real intention to come out here. If we shot a turkey just scouting, that would be awesome. But he knew from in some intel that there was a turkey spending a lot of time here. So we're gonna string one tree to the other. With the blind, we'll get all rid of all the sticks. We'll make absolutely zero noise. And then we come back in the morning, we're gonna throw a decoy out in the field. And I'm hoping what happens is they use one of these big pine trees, like they're massive. These are definitely roosting trees, Big these big pines here. That pine, they might roost right over top of us. And hopefully they pitch into the field we're sitting on um, and they don't pitch into the other field on the other side, but we can still call them over, it'll be no problem. Yeah, I say that now. Zach's clearing some of the debris out here. We'll make sure it's 100% ready to go. We got back cover and nothing no sticks no nothing that's going to make a, a popping sound when we sneak in here clove hitch <laughs> very bushcrafty yeah. two bushcrafters go hunting just kidding i don't consider myself a bushcrafter <laughs> or much of a hunter more hunter than bushcrafter though. <laughs> I think it looks pretty smashing. We got a high point below potentially a roost tree or another roost tree. We're completely sealed in. We got decent, really, I mean, this is, you can't ask for a better blind than this. Pop inside here. We got all the big sticks out of the way. Maybe we'll do a little bit, another comb through just so that we can move around freely in case we needed to make adjustments. We have a doorway on the other side here. Because we have to come in here in the dark and you don't want to make too much noise so we come in the entryway here and then we'll cinch it up as soon as we get in and uh yeah that's what we want to get rid of those little twigs here get rid of these here so when we sit down we're good you sit right here and then as soon as those birds pitch in the field they're dead all right guys that's a bit of prep there let's go check our lobster traps hopefully we got a big Big meal, because I'm starting to get hungry. All right, we change hats again. Change hats means we're switching from one foraging device to another. So we've got our boat here at the boat launch. Every time we check for lobsters, we have to set our boat in. Then we have to boat all the way out, and then we have to boat all the way back and put the boat back on the car and then go back to where we eat the stuff that we potentially catch. So it's quite the operation here. It's almost like you should set up on the beach and just stay on the beach. You guys seen Zach Fowler's car? It's all decked out. So every time we do stuff, people have a look at us funny. A little funny every time. All right, guys, I'm sorry, but I have to leave you guys in the car. But you know what? The beauty of YouTube and editing is that if I leave you guys here on the seat in the car, I'm gonna be back so fast, you won't even realize that I'm gone. Okay, sit here. I'll be back, I promise. I'll show you exactly how many lobsters we got. All right, guys, you gotta see this. We got a huge mess of crabs, including this gigantic one. We ended up getting eight in total. That's better than last time. So we did really well. These are gonna eat really good. It's gonna fill us up. And it's gonna give us back the calories we burned collecting them. On Zach's instruction, he said we should get some seaweed. I know nothing about seaweed or cooking lobster, so I'm just gonna fake it till I make it. <laughs> if I screw it up, Zach will help me. Whoa! Careful. <laughs> oh yeah, I forgot to tell you about that. That's why I had you do it. That's a little slick. It's a little slick. Fill the bucket right up. We'll cook the lobster and the clams right in a, a seaweed bake. <laughs> now we're set. <laughs> Did that one more gingerly. Yeah. I want to wipe out. Oh. All right, do we finally get to eat? We get to eat. Good. I'm starving. I don't know about you. I am starving. I am very. Well, no, actually, I know. I don't feel that bad. But I keep saying that. Like, I'm, I'm hungry, but I don't feel that bad. 
I, I bought the same. I am hungry, but I don't feel that bad. I mean, I could keep doing this, but I know if I keep doing this, I'm probably gonna wither away to nothing. I, I, maybe it's more of like, I would love to eat right now. And, and I, I know we have tons of lobster, so. I totally agree. I think we should boil a couple and and then get to Mowen on them. Coming up in the field, we'll have a check, see if those turkeys are out there. We remember we put that blind out there for tomorrow now and we're, yeah, I mean, if they're there, we're rocking. All right, so that looks like a good plan. Those birds are sitting there nice and pretty for us. That gobbler's looking pretty tasty right now. All we have to do is set up, Get the, we have to get there at the crack of dawn. We are early the crack of dawn. We have to be there before there's any hint of the crack of dawn. So if we're there a little bit late, that's it, it's over. Because there are gonna be drop down in the field or they're gonna see us walking in. So we have to absolutely be there. That's like looking like probably we got to get going at 3 a.m. So next video, you're going to see us wake up the woods. And hopefully we're going to get a turkey on the ground. We're, we're going we're gonna to have an opportunity to add a turkey. Really good opportunity. A really good opportunity. Really good opportunity. Seriously, everything for turkey hunting happens in the woods in the in the morning. You can hunt afternoons. You can hunt evenings. I mean, that would be a field you could just sit there all day, and chances are you'd have a crack at them. But it doesn't usually happen that way. You usually like, end up in the wrong spot. But there's so much action in the morning. You guys have to stay tuned for the next episode. It's gonna be it's gonna be really good. We're back at the shelter, and I'm getting kind of lightheaded. I haven't eaten since breakfast when I had that fish egg sperm omelet minus everything else that makes it an omelet and uh looking forward to getting food on the grill we got some clams left over that we need to cook we got lobster you're gonna make a delicious delicious meal i look forward to consuming you because if i don't i will die go back in there see you in a bit Thank you for your sacrifice, Mr. Lobster Man. All right, guys, it's getting on in the day. We only got a few hours left. We gotta get a fire going and we have no wood left, so we gotta gather wood. I gotta make a fire. Uh, I'm starving, I'm withering away at this point, but uh, if I don't eat before I go to sleep, I'm, well, I'm not gonna go to sleep, put it that way. So let's get this fire rocking. Let's get the lobsters cooking because if anything I deserve right now, it's a good meal and I'm gonna provide it for myself. So let's get going. Food me.
Part of my daily allotment rations, my experiment this year, I'm using cornmeal, as always. So I'm on day five of my cornmeal experiment. I believe it's helping me. We'll find out on the scale at the end when we weigh out. As you know, on the Wilderness Living Challenge, we weigh in, and at the end, we weigh out. And if we lose any weight whatsoever, we lose the challenge. Sounds easy, or maybe it just sounds hard. It should sound hard, because it is hard. We'll see if that helps me maintain my weight. This is the first year I've done this as an experiment to see if it will help me fight 
through and maintain my body weight. So I'll mix these up. I'm just, it's just mass of corn flour. It's treated with lye. It's kind of a historical food because it's a very, fairly simple process to do and it makes really interesting, well, we use it for tortillas. You guys would know this as a tortilla. So you'd grind it up and then treat it with lye. So while I was do doing all the work, no, <laughs> Zach's laughing. Uh, yeah, we split up, we divided and conquered. That's what being in a team means. So don't, you don't need two people to cook lobster. So I cooked the lobster, obviously. Zach made a beautiful table. Guys, check out Fowler's Making Mischief uh, if you want to see how he built the table. Pretty cool. Maybe maybe I'll build a table one time. You guys want me to build a table one time? Maybe at the cabin. Nah, we'll probably just use a sawmill. Maybe we'll build a primitive shelter. Do you guys want to see me build a primitive shelter like that? Let me know down in the comments. We've got some room at uh, my brother's place. You guys watching the cabin series at all? You guys watching the pond series at all? Pretty jazzed out about that. I got to get back, uh, back home to put fish in the pond. Does that work with the bucket or no? No. I mean, if this is, I feel like I'm sitting at the the adult table and I'm a kid, you know, like I didn't. Uh. Here, pull your face up to the food bar. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> Daddy, can I have another lobster? There you go, sir. I mean, son. <laughs> Gotta fish the big boy out. He went in first and make sure he sunk all the way to the bottom. Oh, look at that dinosaur. Oh, primitive beast. We've also got some leftover clams from yesterday. I don't know. I don't even know what day it is anymore. I'm lost. So we, if you don't cook them now, they're going to spoil. So they're going in the pot. We'll put them on. They'll cook probably by the time we're done our lobster. And probably by the time we eat our lobster, we're going to be stuffed. Because the um, one lobster is, is probably... I don't know, man, a few pounds, a few pounds, maybe two. I don't know. I don't know. Lobster weights, maybe three. Yeah. With the claws, <laughs> probably three pounds of the, the claws are huge. We're going to have to smash the claw with the ax. I don't mind. As long as I don't smash my hand right there. I, I would smash it with the back of it just to crack it. See okay. If, see if it works. <laughs> Dude. Oh man, that's a need a split and stump. Look at that hand. Ooh, should I drink the juice in there? Yeah, right. I don't see why not. Is that too hot though? Probably. Is it? Um, look at that hand. That is literally the size of my hand. <laughs> it is a little. Did like... you say look at that hand? It's literally the size of my hand. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Look at that. Yeah. You know. Yeah. It's a claw hand. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Is it hot? Hmm. Really? Thankfully, no. Oh. <laughs> There's just a lot more than you thought? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I heard like a... Uh, <clears throat> glad I swallowed. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We're there. I don't know if you guys watched the other video. You should just go watch the other videos. I'm not going to talk to you again about how to eat these things. Go watch the whole series. You should. You'll learn a lot. But what it takes to live off the land and whether it's even possible anymore. It's what this experiment's about. It's modern foraging, modern hunter gatherers. So we're out here oh, only eating wild stuff. Check that out. Let's get that. Oh, let's get that out. Come on. I want a big piece of meat. Ah, small piece of meat. That's a piece of meat's the size of my hand also. Oh, we're going to wiggle that up. Like so, it looks kind of weird with night shot. So let's let's do that. Let's get it out of the night shot. There we go. Oh, that's so awesome! Thanks. I got one one filming light just for special moments, so you guys can enjoy watching us feast and make you hungry. So, so yeah. So the thing is, you should get wadobo <laughs> and then uh, make wadobo popcorn while you're watching. Oh, dude, that is a good idea. Yeah, I do it. What up, Zach? 
Uh, <laughs> I can't do it. I did the last man standing joke. Oh. Zach said he was the last man standing. He ate all of his lobsters. I cannot eat all my lobsters. And I also can't eat this giant pot of clams all the way to the top. I just can't. I can't do it. Okay, you guys see how much is in here? <laughs> you want some clams? You're welcome to have them. Here they are. They're actually good clams, but they're, they, they smell revolting to me at this very moment in time. Yeah. Uh, there's nothing wrong with them. I really love them the first couple of times I eat them. I ate them, but I can't, I can't do it. Uh, I am going to eat my cakes. Um, there's always room for cake, right? Let me go grab those. So there's my corn cakes. Could manage to get these down, I hope, but I think it helps balance things out. I'm going to move you over a little bit, see you Zach over there in the corner. He's having an, eat, an eating break as well. <laughs> Flossing. <laughs> you go for round two. Yeah, I got to do that too. This challenge is not over yet. Maybe you don't buy into the challenge. Maybe you think it's hokey pokey. But I don't. Man, there's lots of suffering involved in this. But lots of reward too. I'm not really talking about this. I didn't earn this. There's no reward here. This is what regular people do to go to the grocery store. But... I would say it's part of an experiment. So is this whole thing. Part of an experiment to see if it's still possible to live off the land. At the end of this challenge, we're going to eat. We're going to weigh ourselves out. If we gain or maintain a body weight, we win. If we lose any weight whatsoever, we lose. If you watch the video all the way into the right, full stop. And stay tuned because tomorrow morning, which will be the next episode for you guys, we will watch the woods wake up. And we will hopefully have a turkey up in a tree pitched down in front of us 20 yards and I will blow the head off of a gobbler and we will eat him for lunch and dinner tomorrow. That's my plan. We'll see if we can put it together. It's been a lot of work. <clears throat> so good night. Thank you for watching. Thank you for supporting my channel. Go check out Zach. Thank you for supporting us, and if you watch and share these videos because you like them, you help us make more videos for you guys.